my determination this morning to uh, get you guys out of here a long time ago. But I don't interfere with things that prophetic words. Prophetic words come to help you and I to receive an understanding of things right now or the future or even things of the past. God can give a prophetic word to help you to understand why you went through a certain thing. And at the same time, it's been dealing with other people to help them to know that God has planned a future for them. You guys with me this morning? And so when I came back from the back and I heard my wife speaking about certain things and healing and whatever, you know, I was going like, okay, well, it's not so much about me saying this or saying that, it's about what God can speak in the atmosphere that can change people's lives. And so I didn't interrupt her and say, all right, she, she pulled her coattail. I allowed her to finish saying what she was saying because it's necessary for, not just for Elder Russell to hear, but for all of you to hear. God's a good God. Amen. Always has been, always will be. And he won't change things, uh, change himself. But he'll weave your life through things. He's still trying to work me up so he can make me louder. Get your hands off me. <laughs> John's always telling me, move that up, put that over there. Makes the tapes and CDs and the, the program, the recordings better. This morning, uh, I want to talk to you about last days, fathers. Last days. You and I are in the last days. And because we're in the last days. Now, some of you may think that we're not in the last days. Because you're young, you know, and you got all this energy. But just as in the days of Noah, there were many young people that had a lot of energy, but they did not believe what Noah preached. And they perished. And now strength and the youth of their life, they perished. We have a lot of, as I said many years ago, false prophets in the land. They use the TV, radio, media anyway, Facebook, anything that they can use to try to make you think that God isn't, that God's some storyteller, or that what you're doing is totally wrong the way you believe that others should live. We have a lot of information that's wrong information uh, based on the truth of God's word, and God is truth. He's always truth. Based on Jesus being Lord and Savior, He's Lord because of his power. He's Savior because of his mercy. And a lot of people are trying to push men and women away from understanding the dynamics of who God is. Not what he can do. He made everything, but who he is. He's a person who teaches us how to live before him so that we might have the ability within ourselves to know who he is and to serve him rightly, all right? And this is why we have the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. Inspired word to help you and I understand that we can grow in the ability to have faith to believe him. And as we grow, we begin to see more and more of him, and we begin to understand. As we see more and more, we're able to know what's going on around us. And last day's father, and this is something I'm going to, I'm going to share this morning. It's most important. I spoke about it before. But last day's father, fathers need to have the eyes to see what's going on. When you are involved in certain situations or programs or certain things that people bring toward you, you need to be able to see whether this thing is of God or not of God. No part of falsehood is any part of God. If it's false, God ain't in it, all right? If it's a lie or if it's deception or if it's defrauding people 
uh, if it's taking away, if it's stealing, God's not in it. All right? And you need to especially fathers because, and I'm saying this to you guys who's fathers, because God is our ultimate father, and he created us to be fathers. All right? And, and as he created us to be fathers, we need to understand, again, the power part of God and the mercy part of God because we have young people that we deal with, our children that we raise, other young people. Even if you uh, do not biologically have a child, you can still be a father to other children, all right? Based on your figure, your knowledge, based on your character, your influence, you can still be a father to other children. I, my, I'm not Mike's biological father, but I am his father. Right, it's just that away, you know, uh, and and so you have to understand that there are certain things that you see or you should see as a father uh, that you can clarify and bring to, uh, I would say, a picture before those that you're working with, so that they may get a glimpse of what you're seeing. All right, because if a person, uh, William, William, William is in the back. He's hold up your hand, William. Say hello to everybody. William's in the back, and, and a few months back, uh, you guys know that I purchased a boat, and it's sitting in the back, and I took William back there to look at it, and, uh, and William walked around and looked at it and looked at it, and William, you don't know this, but this first time you're hearing this, all right? But the day that you and I walked back there and looked at it, I told my wife, I said, William's going to buy a boat just like mine. <laughs> I told her that, William. And then it was about two weeks later, William came to me, and he said, he says, Pastor, I hope you don't mind, but I took a page out of your book. <laughs> and I told him, I said, well, I hope it was a good page. You know, and then William was showing me his boat, and I laughed, you know, but I had already two weeks before told her the day that you and I walked back there, I told her, I said, William's going to buy a boat just like mine. She says, how do you know that? I said, because I just know it. I can see it. Yeah. See, there are certain things that you need to be able to see as a father, all right, that will help you, it will prepare you for the understanding the goodness of Almighty God, okay? And you and I could be here all day talking about this, especially you guys with your ears to hear and, uh, and open your heart up to, to receive. But the things that God has for us are far greater than the things that you normally see or even dream about that you want personally because the things that you see and dream about are based on things that other people have or other people present to you that you possibly could have in life. But there are things that God wants beyond those things that you don't even think about unless you get into the place where, Lord, help me to see. Help me to see beyond what I'm just seeing. All right? Anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? All right? So what we want to do today, uh, these prophetic words, I want you to write this down real quick uh, because uh, this will go over into next week. And so, uh, you know, so I want you guys to get this. I'm just throwing some things at you. Uh, but this will go over into next week, Pastor Milton is uh, giving me free charge to. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with Pastor Milton, right? One of the wonderful things about me and my son, Pastor Milton, is that both of our interests is about the kingdom of God. We have no whims about each other. You know, he respects me, I respect him. Everything that I do is for him. Everything that he does is for me. We respect each other. We know that, see? Because ministry, it's about ministry. It's not about personal, us personal, it's about ministry. And I see a lot of fathers and sons get personal with each other. And one wants to be bigger than the other. One wants to have control and this and that. And that's, that should never be the issue in the body of Christ. All right. Now, here are these, uh, a couple of these prophetic things that you guys need to know when you hear prophetic words. And whatever you hear me say today or you hear Pastor Milton speak on the stage or my wife speak or Pastor Keisha, Minister Claiborne, she's up there. You may hear something come out of her mouth out of that microphone up there while she's up there backing up. You know, Minister Keisha, you, prophetic words are, are most important for us to understand, okay? And the first thing is that they do is they deal with the now. now. I'm talking about fathers, all right? Fathers, how important it is for fathers to be able to see in these last days. Prophetic words deal with now, okay? Something that's happening in your life right now, okay? That, that's happening around you that you're unaware of, okay? But God isn't. He knows, Okay? And so he understands that there's something that you need to hear today to get your attention, okay? Second phase of prophetic words that you'll hear about is confirmation, okay? Confirmation establishes and it strengthens certain things that you're designed to do or believe in. Confirmation, okay? My sister Barbara Sims, who's gone on to glory, 
she understood this wonderful perception of confirmation. She could hear something and she'd tell you, that's confirmation. Because it was strengthening something that she wanted to do. Something, you guys remember Miss Sister Barbara? That's right. And I know she's laughing right now about this because guess what? Confirmation comes to strengthen you, okay? And we need a lot of things in these last days to confirm that fathers are put here by Almighty God to raise up, to train, to help, to mold, whatever. And they need a lot of confirmation. They need a lot of strengthening. They need that because there are so many things that are out there that are pulling against fathers, all right? Every day, wherever you are, you know this, don't you, Mr. Smith? Every day where you are, something or somebody there that's pulling against you, right? For you to think something else, to believe something else, or to just get your mind off of something that you're doing, something good, just to get your mind off for a second. Because, see, the enemy, uh, as it says in 2 Corinthians, um, uh, I believe it's chapter, chapter 4, chapter 2, or some verse 11, something like that. It says that we are not, we are not ignorant of his devices. Why does it say we are not ignorant? Because he comes against Christians. See, so he's letting, the word is letting you and I know as fathers that guess what? The enemy is looking for you. The scripture says we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay? So he's talking about Christians. So he's letting Christians know that the enemy will dupe you. Now, I know you think you're so smart. You know, and I know you think you got it going on and the enemy could never deceive you. But let me tell you something. If you believe that, you're already deceived. All right? Because he, he duped the first father. All right? So you're, you're no match for him without Jesus. All right? But the deal is, again, confirmation comes to help us to strengthen us. And God knows fathers need some strengthening these days. All right? If you've ever tried to raise your kid and they go to public school and they come back home with 20,000 demons attached to them, tell you everything and don't respect you and whatever, you know you're in a fight. All right? And you should never take it lightly. Okay? I don't have any problems with public school. I have problems with demons. My, flesh is, my fight is not with flesh and blood, but it's with those principalities and things that are ruling things and that are causing things to happen with children in schools. All right? It's not those children. Those children who have grown up in a nice, firm place. Then prophetic words come to help us with our future, okay? Something that has been dropped in your spirit, as you heard my wife said up there, you made your baby jump, and then guess what? When your baby jumped, guess what? It was letting you know that you're pregnant. And if you're pregnant, you're going to have something. So if I'm going to have something, I'm going to have what God wants me to have. If my baby jump, I'm going like, oh, I'm pregnant. Then guess what? You know in a matter of days, weeks, months, or whatever, you're going to have something. So when a prophetic word hits you and your baby jumps, then you ought to know that God just dropped something in you, all right? And it is going to come forth. Now, I have the power now to what it's going to be because I can either make it misled by putting it in atmospheres that it can hear things that will mislead it. Or I can put it in atmospheres that it will hear things that will help it when it comes out, that it already knows how to make its first footstep. Amen. I remember when we used to go around and sing many years ago, Tracine, where is she? Stand up, is she still in here? She just walked out. There she is. She's over there holding a baby now. She was a baby then. But when Tracine came here, she knew songs that we sang. She was a baby in your belly. But she came here knowing the songs that we used to sing. Why? Because the atmosphere produced the steps that she was going to start taking. Most important prophetic words in these last days, fathers, please get this because whoever's got your ears got your life. And if they got your life, they got your future. See, whoever's got your ear, they have your life. And so I need to make sure that I'm hearing truth regardless of where I am whether on the job, in the grocery store, whatever, I'm hearing truth. A young man came, you know, he stopped me uh, the other week and he invited me to a, a little party he was going to have, and it was a couple of people. He came back the other day. I came home, and I came home, and I, I drove home. Uh, I bought my boat. I actually bought my, took my boat home to prepare it because we were going fishing the next day. And somebody comes running down the road, highway, howling and screaming. And I looked up the road, and it was this guy. And he came down the house, and he was hollering, oh, I just got to see your boat. I got to see your boat. And I said, really? 
I said, all right, come on. And he came on in the yard, and he started talking to me, and then he started talking to me about Jesus. And he says, you know, I'm a believer. Well, I want to say this. I'm just confused because there are so many Christian people saying this and so many organizations saying this. The Muslims are saying this. The Catholics are saying this. And I, God knows I hope you're watching this video. And he said, and, and I just don't know. I just wish the man would come back and fix all this and make all of us understand. I said, so it's understanding that you're lacking, right? And he says, well, yeah, it's not that I don't, I don't believe this or that. He says, but it's just so much stuff being spoken that, you know, I, I, I'm just in the middle here. And I said, so you're really telling me that you need understanding? And he says, well, yeah, that's probably what it is. I said, because without understanding, you can't use something. And I said, and this is why you're telling me. I said, but the, he says, but all of them say this and say that. I said, they say that is because they have too many gods. There's only one. And he says, I, I told my wife, you're going to be the man to straighten me up. I said, I certainly am. He told me, he says, I told my wife, you're going to be the man that's going to straighten me up. I said, I certainly am. You know, and then he got back on, you know, he wanted to get on the boat thing. And I, I said, go on, look at the boat, whatever. And he got up and he looked and he was all, and he was all up under the trail. I'd never seen anybody do that. He was all in there. Now, I'm saying this is because this. As a father, I've learned enough through watching you and my natural kids. To, to understand other physical human beings out there, what they're looking for. See? And as a father, you have to have the eyes to see. Yesterday, my son was at the house. Pastor Milton, wave your hand. <laughs> All right? Now, there's Israel over there. Jo Israel, wave your hand. Come on, Israel. All right. Josiah is on the Where's Josiah? He's on the camera. Wave your hand. And so we were talking about me and, and a little bit about me in the past. And, you know, I'm glad I'm not me in the past. And we were sharing some things about, you know, high school and football and all that stuff. And I said, when I was in high school, you know, I used to lift weights. I, I weighed like 185, 90 pounds when I was in high school. And, you know, I used to lift weights. And I, it was my dream to hurt guys on the field. That was my ambition, to hurt guys on the field. And I hurt quite a few guys on the field. And I pray, you know, I know God's forgiven me for that. But at the time, I would hurt you and stand over you and look at you and laugh. And I remember doing that with a guy one day. I heard he broke his knee, and they operated on it twice. But on the field, while the ambulance was there and they were getting everything, I stood over top of him and laughed. You know, and they let me know. Here's, you know, about, about a couple of weeks later, his mother had called the coach and said they operated on his knee twice and whatever. And the coach told me, and I laughed. And the coach gave me a skull and crossbone. I used to get skull and crossbones for hurting people. That was my reward. And I used to put them on my helmet. I had so many that I had my whole helmet covered that when I, when I left high school, I had a whole handful of them from hurting people. Hit a guy in his face, bust his glasses up, I'd look at him and laugh. You know, he's got water. And so we were talking yesterday and, uh, about some stuff like that, and, and uh, my son said, a father knows, he sees. He says, Joe is like Milton now. Israel is like Chastine then. <laughs> and my wife was in the house rebuking demons and everything. <laughs> and so it's your ability to see, see, as a father. I'm not, I'm not shouting and hoping today. I'm just teaching you because I, I want you to know because we're going into this next week. I'm going to still be talking about the last day's father, but it ain't going to be like me just talking to you today. But the deal is, as a father, I need to see and understand the influences that are happening to my children. And then after I see them, I cannot ignore them. Like parents do, oh, well, that, that was that, that's Uncle Joe. Well, do you really know Uncle Joe? Well, there was Sister Annie, Annie, Annie Bobo. Do you really know Sister Annie Bobo? Do you know anything about them deep from them that you can say that that is a danger to my child if my child persists in that? See, we must, as fathers, be able to see. 
what's going on and then not reject it. That's called what? Pretended ignorance. When I know something is wrong and then I just pretend that it's right, that's called pretended ignorance that will not allow you to escape God's judgment because the enemy will use that against your children, all right? So, and he will use it against you later on. You'll have heartaches, all right? Uh, Ariana, would you bring me the picture? Is another grandchild of mine. Uh, Ariana was all dressed up for graduation, due to her hair up, makeup. Uh, would you set that right there for me, darling? Right there. There you go. Will it sit there? There you go. Set it up a little straighter. There you go. Thank you. Ariana was all dressed up, makeup on, hair done, nails and all that stuff, you know. And uh, graduation, some of the kids was looking like, who is that? Because she looks so different. All right? All right? Because they hadn't seen her like that. All right? Well, see, when an appearance happens and it catches us by surprise, what you need to know is that that was already, al already there. It just needed help. All right? And what God has placed in you as a father is already there. It just needs a little, that's all. It just needs a little help, that's all, just a little help. This is a picture that Pastor Milton spoke about some, some months ago. He said that it was, he saw this in, in his office, and he said it impressed him of all the pictures he saw in his office, in my office. He, he can't have this in his office, sorry. But this is a picture that was given to me, and you'll see all of these particular godly people in the Lord Jesus Christ standing behind that man of God who is pictured as speaking prophetically. He's saying a prophetic word to somebody, but all of the power of God is behind those prophetic words because those prophetic words have been passed on. You guys see this? Those prophetic words have been passed on down through generations. You're not the first to hear that God is good. You're not the first. And I want this to get to your heart today, okay? You're not the first to hear. Many passed it up. This picture was given to me by a young man. You guys, some of you guys remember Brother Pippenhagen. It was given to me by, by him. When he came here, he heard just like you are hearing today, just like you hear from this stage always, just like you've always heard in this house. Brother Pippenhagen heard words that encouraged him, that strengthened him. His wife had had four miscarriages. They had told her she couldn't have children. I can still count to four. Four miscarriages, they told her she couldn't have children. That was the doctor's report because the doctor was looking at her physical body, her physical condition, her physical experience, maybe even her parents' physical experience. And I looked at him and laughed. And I said, man, you got to be kidding me. You are, you're a man and you want your wife to have children and you're telling me that somebody else is telling you that you can't have them? You know, we got into a discussion one Saturday, him and his wife came and we sit in that conference room back there and I talked to him. I told him, I said, no such thing. And I prayed for him. It was about three weeks later, he called me one Saturday morning. He says, I need to see you. I said, for what? He says, I have something I want to give you. I said, okay. I was hoping it wasn't a junk clunker, clunker car. And he came with his wife. He had this in a box. And he pulled this out, and he presented it to me. And I said, well, that's nice, man. You know, what brought that on? He says, my wife's pregnant. My wife's pregnant. I don't know what her name was, Louise, Lou, something. My wife's pregnant. 
and she had a little girl. And he told me, when he brought this to me, he said, he says, I've never in my life seen anything like this. I said, it's not what you're seeing there, it's what you can see. If you can see your wife having a child, your wife can have a child. But if you see what the doctors say, then you're going to believe your own unbelief. See, one of the great things about Abraham was that he would not believe what he could not do. Y'all chew on that. See, Abraham would not believe what he couldn't do. He refused to believe what he couldn't do. And he chose to believe what God could do. See, what, what he couldn't do, most of the time, that's what you believe in. What you can't do. And you put your belief in what you can't do. Instead of not believing what you can't do. I can't go to school. Stop believing that. I can't have this. Stop believing that. Oh, I can't be healed. Stop believing that. See, because you believe in what you, guess what, can't do. And fathers in these days need to stop believing what the news media is telling them. And all of the stuff that people are trying to promote in your life and push you to do and whatever. Who would make you take a needle with what you don't know is in it? That's another story. You don't eat what you don't want. I'm going over and talk to this new couple over here. They got a baby on the way. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. As I told you before, God's got a great blessing for you. Don't believe what you can't do. And it's hard to crowd that out because there's so many people trying to tell you the same thing. Your family members, your, your, your friends, even your churches sometimes try to tell you what you can't do, what you can't be. But God has already placed in you as a father. That's why you came here as a male. Certain qualities to function in that will cause the great differences in your house because you can see things that other people can't see. Confirming words will always cause you to be strengthened. Let me do these other two, and then we're going to let you go home today and enjoy your steaks and all those good things. I said future, I said past, uh, and I will, I will clarify some of those next week. And I'm talking about prophetic utterances. Pastor Milton speaking, Pastor Ella, Dr. Ella speaking, Apostle Wilbur speaking when those prophetic words are coming. We have the now, we have confirmation, we have the future, we also have the past. The past gives you understanding of why certain things happen in your life why something was spoken to you and now in this time something else is being spoken to you understand oh that's why that happened God told me that this was the beginning of something then all this went on that's why this happened because God wants to do things in you that you can't do in yourself you with me and this one I'll, I'll talk about today for just a moment the new a new thing it's completely new because it will often surprise the recipient these are things that I've taught many years ago that the Lord brought back up two or three weeks ago for me to share. But the new things will surprise the recipient because the recipient has gotten so far over into it ain't going to ever be that they don't ever think that there will change. Change will happen. And this is why you have to, when you hear the new, you have to go like, man, I'm telling you, God's got something for me. And, uh, and this is the only scripture that I'm going to use today. I want you guys to go with me to the book of 2 Kings. Book of Second Kings. Book of Second Kings. It's 
somebody's on the tape going like, is he ever going to get to the Word? I've been talking the Word ever since I've been up here. I'm always talking the Word. You don't hear all the stuff come out of my mouth. The Word. The Word is always priority, center, around everything that we do, we're involved in, you know, everything, everything, all right? In chapter 2, uh, 2 Kings, here we go. In verse 9, we'll start there for today. Save a little time. Because I know you guys got busy schedules. You got all that good stuff waiting on you. You got to cook. You got to go see your dad. If you have a father that's alive, go see him. Call him. Do whatever you have to. If you have one that's dead, thank God that you had one. You know, whatever. But always be grateful because you're here because God decided to give you eternity through someone. See, you're here because of his dream for you. And so he had to use somebody to get you here so his dream could be completed. So don't walk around talking about, well, my dad treated me like this, my mom like the day before, they left me, they rejected me all. Let me tell you something, get over that. Uh, you're here for God, not for them. <laughs> Woo! Listen, 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 listen. Uh, verse 9, it came to pass when they were gone over that Elisha said to Elisha, Ask what, shall I, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Uh, and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. In other words, I want to be your firstborn. I want to be your son. That's what a double portion would, would come on. And he says, I want, to be, I want to be your son. I want a double portion of your spirit. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you can see me, if you can see me as a father and you my son, if you can see me, it'll happen for you. It's a hard thing because you and I have had some time together, you know, and you've been following me around when I didn't want you to follow me around. I couldn't go to the bathroom without you being there standing at the door. <laughs> you know, and when I sat down to eat and order this, here you are talking about, well, give me the same thing. And I'm going like, well, don't you have your own diet? You know, he's saying, this, if you can see this, because, you know, it's a hard thing that you're asking me because, you know, they weren't, you don't find people, you don't find people that are so unified, so together all the time. They got their own minds. They got their own ways. And he says, if you can see me, if you can see when I go, he says, then I'm believing that it'll happen for you because God is the one who gives the double portion. And we need fathers in these days to believe that they're connected so that they will have something to pass on to their children more so than we all, all we ever did was argue. All we ever did was fight in the house. All, all we ever did was talk about how bad it was. All we ever did was talk about, you know, somebody else got this going on, but it seems like the Lord has forsaken us. When you need to change your words and start being like Jesus said in Mark chapter 11. He says, when you pray, believe that you receive what's in your heart that you see. Because, see, when you pray, you have to see something. And he says, if you believe in your heart what you see, he says, then you will have what you say. See, you got to be able to see you and your wife making it all your life. Not just you and her making it while y'all young, then you trade her in and get four new tires. You know, I see a new brand of car, a new shape of car. So I want, that one looks pretty good now. I'm going to trade my old car in. No, what you need to do is spend a little more time with your old car, invest in your old car because you value it, and guess what? Your old car will ride just like that new car, and your old car is free. (laughs) 
And so, this is to help you. <laughs> These are the things that last day fathers really need to lock into. The other day when we were down and uh, we, were, we, were, we were coming, all of us was landing, caught a bunch of fish, had a good time. You know, we came back in and we were getting Williams' boat on the thing and, you know, and I was showing, showing them some things to help them to understand how to do this better and get it done more efficient, save time, save energy, get home fast, enjoy what you've done today, you know, and uh, Tina said, thank God you was here today, Pastor Rock, Dr. Rock. <laughs> Why? Because there are things that a father sees that just like that, I pass it on to my son that guess what? Now he'll take that and he'll pass it on. See, these are the things that last day fathers really need to have. Things that are secured, sure, and whatever. Now, I know some of you thought that I was going to get up here and I was going to hoop and shout and whatever, and I can't hoop. I forgot to do that. And I can shout and whatever, but you need to have understanding just like that young man told me he didn't have. We are living in some perilous times. Tim, you got sons over there. Your father's always telling me, Tim got the boys down, whatever. You know, he tell me, well, what is he seeing? He's seeing that, guess what? You're taking the time with your sons. See, that's your father. You didn't know your father was telling me that stuff. But see, I got eyes on you everywhere you are. See, see, you, you, you pass on things and people see. See, and it's most important, all of you, you know, all of you guys. Deacon Funderburg walked in last week with his wife after believing for how many years? 17 years? Something like that? 17 years till you got gray hair on your face, right? 17 <laughs> years. How long have you been married, Deacon Funderburg? He's been married almost nine years after waiting 17 years. All right? When he walked in last week with his daughter and his, and his wife, and I spoke to his daughter, but, you know, I, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, I saw you on this and whatever, and, and his daughter was speaking to me. You know what he, Deacon Funderburg said? Oh, so it's like you don't see me standing here, right? <laughs> he was saying, if you're my father, you see me also, you know? <laughs> and I looked at him and laughed. I was going, all right, get on out of here, Deacon Funderburg. I'm going to take him out on the boat and see what he sees. <laughs> but the thing is, living for the Lord is the most enjoyable thing. It is not a burden. When you believe in God for miracles and you stand on his word, you have to see what Sarah saw. And I'm going to close with this. Sarah, at the end, in all of her doubt, when it got to the days of impossibility of her having a child, when it got to the days of impossibility of, of Abraham producing a child, God gave them a child. And when he gave her a child, she stood up and she made this declaration. She said, all who hear me will laugh with me. In other words, she was going to tell the testimony of what God did when it seemed impossible for her to do anything about the situation. And that's where God wants us to be as fathers, to trust him. Psalms 37, trust in the Lord and do good. All right? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. All right? and feed on his faithfulness, see? And then it talks about he'll bring the things to pass, he'll make your righteousness shine like the noonday, and he'll bring forth your justice, I mean, he'll make your righteousness as the light, and your noonday, I mean, your justice, which means that here's the mercy side, he'll bring, guess what, that as the noonday. It'll be like the brightness of the sun, your justice. Everything that you have missed, everything that you thought you'd missed, he'll bring to pass. This is Father's Day. And I want you guys to go enjoy wherever you're going to go, eat with your friends, fellowship with whoever you're going to do. But understand this, every one of you that's a father, and even those of you that do not have biological children and whatever, and you guess what? There are other children out there that you can influence as a father. God has placed it within you. You have the father figure. Even though he's spirit, but he has, a, he has a, the woman figure and the father figure within himself. He bought it out of himself, made the man pull the woman out of the man. So in this day, you are very special to God. Don't let people tell you how to live your life when God has already given you a manual that all you need to do is to consider the manual and follow the manual in the right way. Amen? Amen. Be the man, as Ric Flair said. <laughs> if you're going to be the man, 
If you're going to be the man, you got to beat the man. Why did he say that? Because he believed that he was the man. See, he said that because he believed that he was the man. See, and I take that as a prophetic word that came out of his mouth that God was using that to speak to other men. If you're going to be the man, be the man. Stop being something else. Stop letting everything else tell you how to live your life. Be the man that God wants you to be. And the only way you can be the man is to know the man. Amen. You with me, Brother Burns? I see Brother Burns held his hand. Only way you can be the man is to know the man. Is to know the man. Amen. And that's what we do here. We teach you to be the man. All right? Many people don't like it when I stand up and I tell them truth. I say this and I say that. That's fine. What did you tell me the other day, uh, Brother Larry? Brother Larry told me, he says, let me tell you something, Pastor. He says, there are a lot of people that want to hear truth. You know? And I'm telling all of you guys, truth is the only thing that's going to keep you connected to God. All right? Now, this was a mellow teaching today, and I hope you guys got that because in the end, when Elisha saw Elijah go up, he did. The mantle did fall, and he went over, and he picked the mantle up, and he took the mantle, and to prove that, guess what, he had gotten a double portion, what did he do? Prophetically, he spoke. Prophetically, he spoke. That's the first thing he did. He says, where is the God of Elisha? Where is he? Because I'm looking for him. Because he was Elisha's father, and my father's going on. Where is he? And it says he took the mantle, and he rolled it up, and he smacked the river, and he says the river parted. In fact, there was, a, in, in, in essence, a demonstration of supernatural power when you're a son. We're going to get back into this next week. Bring a friend, because they're going to need to hear what I got to say. Amen. God bless you. Stand.